Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about my top 10 cold weather fragrances that I enjoy wearing. So the weather in the UK is starting to take a turn. It's starting to get cold. All the leaves have basically fallen off the trees by now and it's uh, what we call stick season. So I thought I would film this video, uh, as you can see, you know, for the occasion and talk about my top 10 favorite fragrances to wear when it's cold outside and whenever you want like a kind of cozy environment, these are the fragrances that I wear. So that's kind of how I can describe a winter fragrance is just something that uh, is inviting, it's, it's warm, it's like kind of cozy and the notes in it give you like a kind of relaxed vibe. Whereas for the summertime, when it's already hot outside, you want something that's gonna cool you down. So something a little bit like this, Versace Pour Hum. This thing is like a fresh kind of marine watery smell. This isn't what you want for the winter time. What you do want is something that is kind of warming and stuff like that. So we are going to kick things off with the number 10 spot. Just before we do, if you guys are new to the channel, please don't forget to drop a like on this video and please don't forget to subscribe as well. If you're a fan of fragrances and you want to be part of a great community that is constantly growing and talking about fragrances way too much and that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, then please don't forget to subscribe as well. I have also recently launched a Facebook group, so there is also a link to that too. So let's get on with the number 10 spot. This one uh, I've talked about a fair few times on the channel, and I'll be honest, I did buy this one as a mistake for a summer fragrance. And I thought, look, there's no point in selling it. I can just talk about it in videos. I may as well give it a try. I may as well give it a chance. And I'm quite glad I did because I'm starting to enjoy this fragrance. It's not really the type of fragrance that I would usually go for, I'll be honest. It's a rose and oud fragrance, and I'm not really the biggest fan of that kind of DNA, but I thought, look, this one, I may as well give it a go. It's a clone of a popular Louis Vuitton fragrance, which is Nouveau Monde, and the one that we are talking about is this one here. It's just called Nouveau, and it's by John Lowe, which I think is a Latafa house, or like a, a kind of spin-off of Latafa. And like I said, it's very harsh. It Literally, this thing punched you in the face with the oud, but then you've also got that split right down the middle of like the kind of flowery notes and stuff in here. And it's very dark. This is a very dark fragrance. But when you wear it in the cold weather, this thing cuts through the cold weather really, really nice. And uh, it performs great. This thing is a great performer. And this fragrance is just perfect if you're wearing something like a sweatshirt like I'm wearing now. Uh, it's, in my opinion, the perfect sweatshirt fragrance. It is very harsh. Like when you smell the oud in here, it's a bit like, oh, wow, that is strong. But the rose in here complements it perfectly. But yeah, this thing is just great for the really cold days. If you're wearing like a sweatshirt, it's great. It's also quite cheap too. I think I got 100 mil for like 25 pounds, which is quite a good price. Coming in at the number nine spot. This one, I'll be honest, I used to wear a lot more uh, back in the day when I was first starting out with fragrances, but it is still a great cozy cold weather fragrance. It's something I wear mainly in uh, the afternoons, kind of like between four to 8 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, it just kind of gives that vibe and the one that we're talking about is this one here. Carolina Herrera CH Men Privé. And this thing has been discontinued, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just my bottle, but the performance on it isn't the best. It is that kind of like mysterious guy in the back of the bar um, type fragrance. Uh, I think that Jeremy said something like that. And it's true, it does smell like that. Also, I can see this being worn with like, you know, those fur coats that you get. This is perfect for that. The performance isn't the best, but it's got that really nice cardamom in here. Uh, that just gives it a really nice warmth to it, and I really like it. So coming in at the number nine spot is CH Men Privé. Unfortunately, this continued. Coming in at the number eight spot, this one is quite a weird one. Uh, this one I wore kind of by accident, really, uh, in the winter time. I remember I was going to, uh, I think it's called, what's it called? Winter Wonderland with my girlfriend. And I was wearing a red North Face puffer coat. And I thought, okay, well, what's red? What, what is like a fragrance I can match to this? And I was like, oh, red, and I thought rose. And at the time, I was just, I don't know why, but I was looking directly at this fragrance and it has the note of rose in it. And it's this one here, Machino Toy Boy. And this is a very strange fragrance because like I said, it has got the main note of rose. It has also got a lot of kind of incenses and stuff in here and spices. This thing is also quite spicy too. So to me, it smells a little bit like a Parma Violet Sweet. And it reminds me, a little bit of um, Rose Incense by Amouage from the uh, library collection. And this thing does really good in the cold weather, surprisingly. You wouldn't think it would, but 
there's just something about it that I actually really, really enjoy. It's, some people compare this to like a sour rose. And I was thinking with this fragrance, when when can you really wear it? You can't wear it in the summer. You, Yeah, you. I don't think you could wear it in the summer. This thing is more, in my opinion, suited for the winter time. And when it's like super cold outside, wear this when it's like zero degrees outside. Trust me, uh, this thing is great for the cold weather. Another surprising cold weather fragrance is this one here at the number seven spot. John Paul Gaultier Ultra Male. And Ultra Male, you would think that this, based on the notes, is more of a summer fragrance. The pear and vanilla especially, but this thing, it smells a little bit like bubble gum in my opinion. And it is just really kind of like loud and stuff like that. And this thing in the cold weather cuts through uh, so many things. It really amps up the note uh, of the pear, the juicy pear in here but you've got the warm, it's almost like a burnt vanilla, I'd say, in this. And it's really sweet, it's got a warmth to it, but whenever the pear note uh, is hit with like the cold weather, it just does something like really, really good. Perfect for like if you're going on like a night out and you're not, you don't want to be too serious, this is what you wear. So coming in at the number seven spot is Ultra Male by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Coming in at the number six spot, this one is a fairly new one on my on my list and I've been really, really enjoying it. I've actually got decants of this available. So there is a link in the description if you guys wanted to try this fragrance too, if you've not tried it yet. It's the first niche fragrance on this list and I have been really, really liking this one lately. It's from the House of Ansara and it's this one here, Tonka Cola. There was a lot of hype about this fragrance and I thought, okay, I don't really buy into the hype of these fragrances too much anymore. I kind of go my own way, but I thought, look, I may as well decant this one if it's hyped. Uh, and I thought I'd buy a bottle and I'm quite glad I did because like what the name suggests, it does smell very cola -y. It smells a little bit to me like a cherry Coke, but after like the kind of hour mark, when that sort of cherry note is gone and the cola note is sort of dried down a little bit, you get the tonka in here and it gives it a really, really nice warm sweetness and it's just really good and it's quite unique too. So not many people are going to recognize what you're wearing. Uh, sometimes they will give you the reaction like you smell like Coca-Cola, uh, which is understandable because the first hour of this fragrance does smell almost identical to Cherry Coke. But after that, it does turn into a really warm fragrance uh, and a really cozy fragrance too. So coming in at the number six spot is Mansara Tonka Cola. Coming in at the number five spot, this one is Joint. I could not decide which one from the house I wanted to put on this list. So I thought I'd include two. I mean, there's a lot more of this fragrance house that can be worn for the winter time. These two, I just seem to be picking up a lot lately for the really cold weather. And they're both quite warm. They're both, uh, they both actually have the note of cumin in it, surprisingly. And they're both from the House of Anwash. They're very daring. First one is this one here. Probably one of the coolest bottle designs that I own. It's Fate Man, which has now been discontinued, by the way. So Fate Man smells like curry, sometimes people say. I don't get that. It just smells warm, brown, spicy. And then the other one you've got is this one, which is Overture Man. Like I said, also has the note of cumin in it but it's also got a really fleshy grapefruit and cognac smell. So they're both very daring, but I absolutely love both of them. Really cool bottle designs for both. This one is just so easy going for the colder months. I've had great reactions with this thing. It's just so calm. It's like, uh, if you look at the artwork for this thing, uh, it's like based on like celestial stuff, like the moon and the sun and stars. And it just reminds me of like an easygoing kind of fragrance. This is something like, I think, if you were to go up to like a wizard's tower or something like that in like a, a fantasy novel or film, and you were to go into like that little kind of, um, if, you were to, if you were to go up there through like a little hatch and it's just like a brown carpets and stuff like that, bookcases everywhere, uh, and there's like incense and stuff getting burnt. That is kind of what I can imagine this thing smells like. And he's got telescopes and he's got like, you know, moon phase and stuff dangling down from the ceiling. Uh, that's what I'd imagine this thing's like. It's really good. I'm so sad it's been discontinued. Uh, and it's some Anwage and this thing performs amazingly for me. Same with Overture Man. Probably one of the longest lasting in this list actually. Overture Man is just like that fleshy grapefruit smell. Um, it's got the note of cumin in it as well. 
and animalic notes. It's quite, uh, it is quite dare in this thing. I will wear this on bonfire night every single year and I wore it recently and it's just a perfect occasion for that. It's got a, a slightly smokiness to it as well. It's quite mature, but I really, really enjoy this thing. So coming in joint at the number five spot is Overture Man and Fate Man. Both great winter fragrances from the House of Ramoise. Coming in at the number four spot, this one I have put here because it is insane projection. I'm I'm literally holding this like an arm's length away and I can still smell it. <laughs> it's crazy how strong this fragrance is. I'm actually scared to spray it on clothes because it does not come off. <laughs> it stays on the clothes forever. The one that we are talking about is from the house of Montal. It's my only one that I've got from Montal. Maybe I'll buy more. Who knows? At the minute, I'm quite happy with just owning the one. The one that we're talking about is this one here, Arabian's Tonka. So this is a very gourmand sweet fragrance. It's got like, I think the main note of sugar in here, like a sugar cube smell. And it's also got the note of oud in here. So it's quite dark, but very, very sweet. If you aren't a fan of sweet fragrances, don't buy this because it is one of the sweetest, fo sweet focused notes of any fragrance that I know. but it's got a really nice warmth in here. There's something about the uh, sugary sweetness and the oud, the kind of dark woody oud in here that just kind of works quite well. And this thing in terms of compliments is off the charts. Um, if I want to go out and wear something for compliments in the winter time, I'm going to wear this. My girlfriend likes this, which is strange. She usually likes the, uh, the kind of fresher fragrances, stuff like, you know, Chanel's and Versace, poor harm stuff that we talked about earlier. She likes the fresh ones, but surprisingly, she really likes this one. And maybe it's from the sweetness, but if you want great compliment factor, then give this one a go. Coming in at the number four spot is Montal Arabian's Tonka. So strong as well. Okay, and kicking the list off in the number three spot. This one is a little bit similar to Arabian's Tonka with the fact that it's super sweet. So if you aren't a fan of sweet fragrances, probably stay away from this one, but I feel like this one's slightly better. The performance is actually very, very similar, thinking about it, to Arabian Stonka. I just prefer the DNA of this one. It's a little bit kind of uh, more well-rounded. It's not as harsh from the oud in here. And it's this one here from the house of the Taffa. And it's Kamra Kawa. So this is the flanker version. This one uh, has got the note of coffee compared to the original Kawa. And oh man, <laughs> this thing is Oh, I love this thing, man. You can see how much of a dent I've put in this. And I've also decanted it. Decant's available in the description. This thing is so good. Um, it's like a 50% take on Angel Share by Killian. Uh, but this thing is done in its own way, in my opinion, I think. And it is so, so good. I can't really describe it to anything. It smells a little bit like um, a praline cake or like a kind of caramel cake like a coffee caramel cake, a little bit. But, oh man, it's sticky, it's sweet, and you've got the coffee note in here too. Oh, and it's got the coffee note in here. I can't really describe it. You just have to try this thing if you don't have it in your collection. It's probably uh, the second cheapest on this list. Um, the cheapest being Nouveau, this being the second, it's 30 pounds and it's just so good for the winter time. Uh, it's so warm, it's so sweet, it's so inviting. And actually thinking about it, my girlfriend really likes this one too. So that's how you know it's a, a good fragrance. So coming in at the number three spot is Kamra Kawa. Also, big shout out to the uh, bottle design. I really like the kind of whiskey tumbler design that they've gone for this thing. And funny enough with the cap, you don't lift it off like that. You're actually supposed to screw it like that. Yeah, cool bottle design, I'll be honest. Even for a clone house, it surprised me. Okay, coming in at the number two spot. This one just missed out on the number one spot. And the reason why is just because I thought, look, these ones are both kind of cozy and very kind of warm and inviting. This one is a little bit more mature for my liking, but it's so, so good. It's, a, it's a, the last niche fragrance on this list. And man, it is probably one of the best from the house. It's this one here. Creed's Royal Oud. This thing, if you know, you know. Like, if you tried this thing, then yeah, man. 
it's actually not got the note of oud in it, surprisingly. It's got the main note of cedar wood, and it just gives it a really kind of almost spicy, warm, woody smell. A little bit like uh, if you were to be in like a really old mansion and you're next like a fireplace with all the bookcases and stuff behind you. That's a little bit what this reminds me of. It smells a little bit Christmassy, something like, you know, what your granddad would wear on Christmas. Uh, it's a little bit kind of mature, a little bit old school, but it is from Creed, so it's got really good fragrance notes in here. The performance for Creed, this thing is actually probably one of the better ones, I'll be honest. Uh, and I really enjoy wearing this thing, especially with something like what I'm wearing today. Greys, greens, this thing works perfectly. And wow, I've just seen like actual like uh, oily stuff coming up from the bottle. So yeah, natural materials in here. And as well, if you really dig deep into this thing, there is a tiny little bit of like uh, freshness in here too. I think it's pink pepper and lemon that are in the top notes of this thing that kind of give it a little bit of like a citrusy freshness, but it's like the perfect amount. It's like something you would get from like, I don't know, like a, like a warm tea or something uh, whilst you're by the fireplace in your old, in your old, old fashioned library next to your fireplace. This is very old money fragrance. It's very sophisticated. So coming in two spot is Creed's Royal Oud. And guys, just before we get on with the number one spot, remember if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to drop a like on this video. Please don't forget to go down and subscribe as well if you're enjoying the video so far. Also, there is a link in the description if you guys wanted to go and try any of these fragrances. I've got two mil, five mil and 10 mil available. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, if based on the notes, you wanna try these fragrances for the winter time, and instead of investing the full money for a bottle, then I will leave links in the description. And coming in at the number one spot, guys, this one was my favorite fragrance for quite a long time, actually. Whenever I smelled it and I was getting into the fragrance game, I probably had about 10 to 20 fragrances by this point. And this one, I uh, this was probably my biggest purchase back in the day. And I saved up for a while for this fragrance, and I'm so glad I did because it is so so good it was the first decant of a fragrance i bought actually i bought a 10 mil and i sprayed it all on me for that winter time and then i had to wait the entire rest of the year to get this as a full bottle for the next winter and i'm so glad i did because it's so good it's perfect for winter time it's this one here by the fireplace by mesa margella this is like a, a better version of stronger with you by armani if you guys have ever tried that this thing is just in my opinion the better version of it it is honestly just like you've been to uh, uh, by, a, by a fireplace and you've got the smell of uh, like the smokiness. If you've ever been and like made a fire with your friends and stuff like that and you come home and then you smell your, your clothes, that is a little bit what you get with this. But you've also got a really nice vanilla note in here. You've got a really nice chestnut note in here too. So it's got a really nice sweetness whilst also being quite smoky. I might wear this in my scent of the day actually today. It's so calming, it's so, so cozy and inviting. When people smell this around you, they wanna come in closer to you because you just smell amazing with this thing. Perfect for the winter time in my opinion. Also probably one of my favorite from the Replica line. You can see at the bottom there that it's male and female fragrance. So it is unisex and funny enough, my best friend's girlfriend, uh, she smelled this one and she decided to pick up a bottle for herself because she liked it so much. So. Uh, it does great for reactions. So coming in at the number one spot, my favorite fragrance to wear for the winter time is this one here, Mesa Margiela by The Fireplace. So that is gonna do it for this video, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite fragrances are to wear in the colder months. Be really interesting to see uh, what you guys come up with. I'm really excited to, to actually go out and wear all these fragrances now. Uh, I'm trying to kind of stay away from the fresher fragrances because I know that uh, I'm not going to be able to wear these winter fragrances in the summer, so try and get your most out of your winter fragrances in the colder weathers. Typically, they're a lot stronger too, which is always interesting, and they do seem to get great reactions, all of the 10 on this list. Remember, guys, don't forget to drop a like on this video if you've made it up to this point. It really, really does help out on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe as well. Like I said, we're growing a great community. We've recently launched a Facebook group, so uh, feel free to join that too. I did mention earlier about decants. I have got the two 5 mil and 10 mil available which are again all in the description below. If you guys want to learn how to decant fragrances for yourself and actually make money back on your fragrances and, and allow your fragrances to actually make you money, uh, then I have got a link down in the description below. It's a mini course which goes step by step by step 
in detail everything that you need to know for decanting your fragrances, growing a massive collection and snowballing it so that you can get loads and loads of fragrances just like how I've done. When I was pricing it, I thought, look, I'm not going to be like, you know, one of those gurus and stuff like that and price it for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. I was like, there's no way I'm going to charge people like crazy amounts for this. It's just something I thought, look, it's something I can give back to people for and it only costs £10. So it's the same cost as if you were to decant this fragrance and sell a 5ml decant, you've already paid for the course. So if everything that you learn on that course and you actually implement it, you can make your money back literally on one decant, essentially. So there's a link below if you guys want to learn how to decant in fragrances too. So with that said, that's enough shameless plugs, as always. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.